man pours a bottle of wine and then pretends to be an alcoholic to the Russian embassy. The security guard at the door immediately went up to drive him away, but the man's target had already appeared. When the target left, the man immediately drove behind and called the police. He set a Cadillac drunk driver and threatened him with a gun. So in no time, the traffic police stopped the bodyguard's car behind him, and now only the car the target was sitting in was left. Seeing that his bodyguard did not follow him, the man in the car began to feel a little wrong, but the next second, he was hit. The doors on both sides of the car suddenly also jammed. Then, the man calmly got out of the car, poured a whole bucket of gasoline into the other car and then took out a lighter and threw it over. The car immediately burst into flames, but the man did not leave, but pulled open the car door two shots to kill the driver. See the target refused to say, the man to his thigh directly to a shot, but I did not expect the target was still resisting, so the man shot him again in the lungs, he just said a name. After getting the desired information, the man shot the man dead, then he stepped out of the car and raised his hands in surrender. The man's name was Rashi, a former Navy SEAL leader with a happy family and a wife who was 8 months pregnant but his teammates were assassinated by mysterious people one after another, and Rashi was soon targeted as well. In the middle of the night, a group of assassins cut the power to his house. He was lying on the couch listening to music and didn't even notice the power was out. The assassins break into the bedroom and kill Rashi's wife. When Rashi heard the commotion, he quickly went upstairs. He kills several of the killers and runs into the last one. They shoot each other and Rashi falls to the ground with serious injuries. The killer was also shot several times and struggled to escape. After months of resuscitation, Rashi was lucky to recover his life. In order to avenge the death of his wife and son, he began to work out frantically to regain his physical strength. Meanwhile, Rashi's leader, Lucy, received the CIA's investigation report on the assassination. It turns out that one of the people they killed in Rashi's last mission was the son of a high-ranking Russian official. The assassination was a unilateral retaliation by Russia, but in order not to cause a bigger dispute between the two countries, the CIA decided not to pursue the case. Lucy couldn't bear to see Rashi grieve. She took the risk of leaking the information to Rashi. This man was the head Russian agent who organized the assassination. Rashi killed him and was arrested and imprisoned. But this prison is full of Russian prisoners. It doesn't seem that simple. Someone wants him dead. The newly incarcerated man wrapped his t-shirt around his fist, then took off his jersey, turned on the tap and stuffed it in. Then he poured water on his body while waiting for something. When the pool of water ink out completely submerged the floor, the cell door was finally opened. Rashi kicked over a prison guard, then he moved around and fought with the guards. The guards did not expect Rashi to be prepared and were caught off guard. After a while, Rashi killed them all. Rashi then took one man hostage and threatened the rest of the guards to close the door. As the other side was getting more and more support, but then a marshal suddenly appeared with an order from the senior management to take Rashi out. So Rashi walked out of the prison unharmed. He was taken to a secret base full of big leaders of the CIA. The reason they got Rashi out was to find out what he had learned from the head of the Russian agents. Rashi said the name of one man, Tom. Everyone froze. Because Tom was a Russian spy and did a lot of bad things, but the CIA had clearly disposed of him in secret before, so how could he reappear? The staff took out a bunch of photos for Rashi to identify. Rashi immediately recognized Tom, the man who killed his wife and son. If Tom is still alive, the CIA will do whatever it takes to get rid of him. Rashi volunteered to avenge his wife and son, but the operation was to be carried out in Russia. In order not to reveal their official identities, they boarded a civilian plane and arrived in Russian airspace. But just as they reached their destination and were ready to parachute, a Russian warplane flew past. This is Russian Air Force on Su-57. You have been intercepted. Everyone stopped jumping immediately, and the pilots kept repeating that they had permission to fly. But the other side didn't care about that. A missile instantly hit the left wing of their plane. The plane fell quickly and plunged into the bottomless sea. When it stopped, 
The water quickly flooded the cabin and everyone started to evacuate, but Rashi dived straight into the sea. He could not give up this opportunity to avenge his wife and son, so he collected inflatable life-saving equipment, and then found weapons and equipment to strap on, and followed the equipment to the surface. With the help of his teammates, he finally escaped the dangerous waters safely. After a little reorganization, they found Tom's hiding place through intelligence, but Rashi suddenly locked all his teammates out of the door, because he wanted to solve his wife's murderer himself. But when he entered the house, he found Tom's body strapped with bombs. He sits calmly in his chair. Tom tells Rashi that he is not a Russian spy, but an American CIA agent. Their purpose is to lure Rashi here. Rashi is baffled, but as he is about to ask, Tom says to him, we just have to go to hell. And with that, he detonated the bomb. Luckily, Rashi reacted quickly to avoid being blown up and his teammates are suddenly attacked by snipers just as they come to his aid. One of his teammates was wounded and exposed to enemy fire. Rashi saw this and immediately used his shattered mirror to identify the sniper's position. With Rashi's cover, his teammates began to rescue the wounded, but there was another sniper on the other side. They got the wounded man down and prepared to evacuate, but when they opened the door, there was a third sniper. Another teammate was hit. They were completely trapped here. At the same time, two Russian police officers arrived at the scene, but they were killed by the snipers one by one. Rashi then realized that he was being used. Someone wanted them to provoke a dispute between the US and Russia to intensify the war. They were surrounded by more and more Russian troops. They could not let the traitor succeed. They had to escape from here alive. The man put a circle of tape on the wall and then it far away and pressed a switch. A big hole was instantly blown in the wall. Rashi took his teammates and evacuated. But they were already surrounded by the Russian military and police and there was no way to get out. So, Rashi decided to go to the rooftop to attract enemy fire, so that his teammates take the opportunity to leave, because he was the only one who could die here. Then Rashi alone to the rooftop will be a grenade thrown down, and then raise the gun sweep. All the firepower was attracted to the top, and his teammates escaped from the back alley without incident. Soon, the Russians came up from downstairs. Rashi was barely able to resist for a while, then he hid in a corner and couldn't retreat. But he saw his chance, smashed the skylight, leapt down, and then picked up his backpack and killed his way downstairs. But this is no way to go on. Rashi opened the backpack was full of bombs. Finally, in the middle of the rubble, Rashi quickly changed into the enemy's clothes, blended in with the crowd and escaped. Now, except for his teammates, everyone thought Rashi was killed by the bomb. Rashi used this time to find out who was behind it, and that person was the director of the CIA. Rashi tied the director into his car and questioned him about why he did it. Unexpectedly, the director felt that the United States is not united within. That's why he wanted to intensify the conflict between the United States and Russia, so that they can unite against foreign enemies. Rashi was speechless after hearing that. He hit the steering wheel and drove off the bridge. The river soon flooded the car. Rashi ordered the chief to shout out his wife's name or he would be drowned. In order to live, the chief frantically shouted out, but Rashi did not fulfill his promise. He let the director sink to the bottom of the sea with remorse for his wife. In the end, with Lucy's rescue, Rashi managed to escape from the car. Afterwards, he made the recordings of the director and the car public. Lucy also helped him to get a new identity. Since then, Rashi has been living an ordinary life, 